Butterflies and Battle Axes by Mercedes M. Yardley There's a misconception about butterflies. I grew up in a small town ringed by cattails and milkweeds. When the summer days started getting shorter and school threatened to start, my father, my brother, and I would pile into the car. It was time to look for monarch caterpillars. We would drive slowly down the road, looking for munched on milkweed or the bright black, yellow, and white splash of a caterpillar against the green leaves. We'd collect the caterpillar and milkweed into glass jars with holes punched into the lid. Sometimes we get as many as a dozen caterpillars. Usually we found four or five. We'd take them home, give each its own jar, and watch them. They weren't terribly exciting. They did nothing more than eat all day, leaving small, square droppings at the bottom of the jar. They looked like tiny bells of hay. We'd keep the caterpillars supplied with fresh milkweed. It's called that because when the leaves are torn, it bleeds a thick, white liquid. This milk is full of poison. The caterpillar munches it happily, but if a bird eats the monarch caterpillar, it will get violently ill or even die. But still, I go every day and collect more milkweed from my poisonous beauties. After the caterpillar has eaten its fill for several days, it would climb to the top of the jar or fasten itself to the underside of a particularly strong leaf. It hangs upside down, curled up like the letter J, and then the magic happens. This is where the misconception lies. Butterflies don't spin themselves cozy cocoons out of silk. Moths do that. But butterflies start their transformation in a different way. They hang upside down in what looks a little bit like the fetal position, and then their skin tears. It starts at the head, and it rips all the way up the body, exposing the beautiful chrysalis underneath. The chrysalis is a healing sea foam green color with little flecks of gold. They're stunning. I'm very careful with them and have only touched one once in my life. It felt slightly cool and it brimmed with life. I could feel it. But even amid this beauty, the remnants of the caterpillar's old skin is firmly attached to the base. It is a scar. It shrivels until it eventually falls away, the unsightliness gone, but it was there. I plainly remember the shredding and the tearing. It's graphic. It's a memory that has teeth. When the monarch is ready to hatch, the chrysalis becomes transparent. It's orange and black. The trapped butterfly fights its way out. It's wet and bloated, kicking and climbing, exactly like a chick out of its shell. It's a struggle. It has moved me to tears. Then the weary butterfly grabs onto the jar lid, the milkweed, or my hand, and it hangs, exhausted. At first it doesn't have the strength to flutter its wings. Eventually, it is able to do so. One tiny flutter. Two. Until they become several. When the butterfly is finally ready to fly, it awkwardly flutters its wings until it is picked up into the wind. Usually it hits the ground immediately, but it tries again, again and again. It gets stronger and braver until eventually it is able to stay aloft and then it flies away. It has no reason to stay here now that it is free. It is driven to fly until it's time for it to migrate south. One of my most memorable experiences was being caught in the middle of a monarch migration. They flew and spun through the broken windows of my blue Geo Metro. I slowed the car while the butterflies crawled over my windshield and landed in my hair. It was breathtaking. Butterflies are amazingly fragile. Touch their wings too much and the tiny scales fall off. It looks like nothing more than dust on your finger, but they won't be able to fly. Their wings tear, their thin legs break, but they are more than beautiful, fragile things. They are strong and determined. The fight that they endure in order to become more than what they originally are is fierce and violent and humbling. I am in awe of their strength. I am in awe of their delicate ferocity. They are gorgeous little monsters with wheels of steel. They are butterflies with battle axes. How could I not make the comparison between these butterflies and my family? My son's rather unique disability has changed everything for us. 
I see him struggle with the simplest things, but he doesn't give up. At the age of seven, he moved his lips together in strange ways and said the word mama for the first time. He kisses us before he goes to sleep. He runs on legs that should be too stiff and sore for such things. I see him fight for the right to flourish as he was intended to. He's kicking down the walls of his chrysalis, and who knows what splendor we'll find underneath. I see the change in myself as well. If you had told me ten years ago that my son would be asked to leave libraries, or that strangers would remark on his disabilities in grocery stores, I wouldn't have believed you. Now I know better. My delicate wings hang on veins of steel. I feel like I'm constantly swinging a metaphorical battle axe over my head. My son will attend school. My son will be medically cared for. My son will be safe. But we haven't lost sight of beauty. We haven't lost our hope. While living in Finland with our yet undiagnosed baby, my husband bought me a silver pendant for our anniversary. It was a sweet, double-sided battle axe on a silver chain. I have always treasured it. Three years ago, I found a colorful monarch butterfly pendant as well. They are the same size, and I wear them both on a chain together. I wear it whenever I need the extra reminder of strength. I wear them for meetings with the school, for playdates with other children, for cardiology appointments. I don't find the butterfly and the battle axe combination at odds. I learned as a child that strength and beauty go hand in hand. It isn't a strange combination at all. It's exactly right.